This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Boruto Uzumaki from Naruto Boruto Uzumaki is a shinobi from Konohagakure's Uzumaki clan and a direct descendant of the Hyuga clan through his mother. While initially resentful of his father and his absence since becoming Hokage, Boruto eventually comes to respect his father and duties. Regardless, he vows to instead become a shinobi like his mentor. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Boruto Uzumaki. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's stretch reaches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Boruto is the first child of Naruto and Hinata Uzumaki, receiving a younger sister Himawari two years later. As his parents continued to stay close to their childhood friends over the years, Boruto ultimately came to know the various parents' respective kids as well. On the day that Naruto was to be inaugurated as the seventh Hokage, his sister Himawari wanted to bring her panda toy to the ceremony, but Boruto, fearing that he would end up carrying it, tried to take it away from her. When the toy's head was ripped off in the ensuing tug of war, Himawari awakened her Byakugan and attacked Boruto in her anger, despite his vehement apologies. Naruto, sensing her killing intent, arrived and shielded Boruto and was knocked out in the process due to the attack landing on one of his chakra points. Fearful of what an attack that could knock out his father would do to him, Boruto tried to run from Himawari, although she easily located him hiding in a closet. From then on, he vowed never to anger her again. Academy Entrance Arc in the anime, Boruto came across Denki Kaminariman, who was being bullied by some kids. After rescuing him, they became friends, and insist that Denki stands up to his father for being forced to join the academy against his will. The next day, en route to begin his studies at the academy, Boruto unknowingly awakens his dojutsu and notices a dark shroud surrounding Denki. As he follows him onto a thunder rail carriage, Boruto stops Denki from taking revenge on the bullies from the previous day and divert the carriage from crashing. Boruto and Denki then depart with the bullies and take the carriage to the academy's entrance ceremony where they manage to crash it into his father's stone face, leading him to receiving a two-week suspension. For the next two weeks, Boruto is homeschooled by Hinata. After returning to the academy, he's placed in Shino Aburame's homeroom and introduces himself to his classmates, to which they begin talking negatively about him for being under the impression Boruto gets special treatment for being the Hokage's son. He soon met Iwabi, who views Boruto negatively. Through the heated encounter, the two decide to fight each other in a match. Upon barely defeating Iwabi within the rules he set in place, his classmates view Boruto differently than they did initially. Later, when Boruto's recklessness caused some property damage, Shino decided to have Boruto and other students help repair the Hokage Rock. The following day, Boruto, along with Inojin and Shikadai, found Metal Lee, who was acting unusually aggressive. Boruto's dojutsu activated, noticing the same dark chakra surrounding Lee that Denki had. With a group effort, they were able to subdue Lee long enough for the Dark Chakra to leave him. After apologizing to Lee for the other day and applauding his remarkable combat skills, the group became much closer. Later, concerned about how only he could see the Dark Chakra, he asked Hinata more about the Byakugan. Later, while the students began learning about the summoning technique, Boruto caused tension between the girls and boys of his class, leading to Shino organizing a race to capture a flag between the two groups. At the climax of it, Boruto attempted to use the summoning technique, leading to the ghost being summoned. As it began causing havoc, Konohamaru Saratobi subdues the beast. Afterwards, the girls win the competition and make peace with the boys. On another day, Boruto met the new transfer student Mitsuki, who he found strange. After his welcoming party, Boruto, along with other students, subdue a construction worker at the academy who was being possessed. Boruto, Mitsuki, and Shikadai Nara were later called to the training field by Shino for an extracurricular class. Once their teacher appeared, Boruto noticed he was being possessed. As the students were being attacked by their teacher, they came up with a plan to subdue him. Once they defeated him, Shino ends up rescuing Mitsuki and Boruto who were on the verge of drowning in their attempt to defeat Shino. Later, as Shino voiced his decision to resign as teacher despite being possessed, the students convinced him to reconsider, apologizing for their earlier statements. Later growing concerned about his repeated and seemingly random attacks, Boruto and Shikadai begin discussing, trying to figure out the source behind them and why apparently only Boruto could see it. Later, they, along with Mitsuki, find several of the girls confronting Magire Kakuremino, a shy boy that is a student from a different class. As the boy was stalking Sumire lately, Chocho insisted that he be more forward with his feelings. 
When Magide meekly asks her out, Sumire turned him down, leaving him distraught and running away in shame. The following day, various creepy messages are left for Sumire. While Boruto and the others decide to watch over her, they are systematically separated from Sumire. Eventually, the perpetrator is revealed to be a possessed Magide, who kidnaps Sumire. Boruto and the others soon find them, where Magide quickly attacked them with his concealment skills. Eventually, Chocho was able to reach Magide, noting that such an indecisive nature will never win anyone over. Accepting the fact that his methods of trying to make Sumire like him were in poor taste, the ghost was rejected from Magide. As Magide began to apologize for his actions, he fainted, which was the result of severe chakra drain caused by his possession. Later, as Boruto continued to wonder about the nature of his shadow specter attacking everyone and why only he could see it, he ultimately fell asleep. While dreaming, he was approached by Tonerio Tsutsuki, who warned him of an impending danger and that Boruto's eye is the key to stopping it. Upon waking up and seeing his dojutsu for a moment in a reflection, Boruto became overjoyed at the prospect of being a great hero. He began acting like the action movie hero Kagemasa. When his family approached him about his new attitude, he insisted that he had finally manifested his Byakugan. Naruto noted that it was very unlikely since Boruto had no prior training for it. However, admitting that Himawari did achieve such a feat prior, they decided to talk to Hiyashi about this. Upon arriving at his grandfather's home, the doting grandfather quickly smothered his grandchildren in hugs, which was quickly repeated by their equally doting aunt Hanabi. As Himawari played with Hanabi, Boruto and Naruto explained the nature of their visit. After Hiyashi gave a similar explanation to Naruto's about the unlikeliness of Boruto's powers being the Byakugan, he decided to test his grandson with a sparring match. Hanabi then stepped in, insisting to spar Boruto herself, which was agreed. Quickly, the heiress showed her might, easily overwhelming Boruto and countering all his assaults and tactics. Hanabi began mocking Boruto into revealing his speculated Byakugan. While Boruto's performance forced Hanabi to fight more seriously, he was ultimately defeated soundly. This led everyone, including Boruto, to sadly conclude that he did not, in fact, awaken his Byakugan. Afterwards, it was decided that Boruto and his family would stay the night. After dinner, Boruto began pouting alone, wondering if his dream from earlier was meaningless. Hanabi then approached him, seeing how down he was. Realizing that Boruto's goals weren't just about proving himself to his father, but also a personal problem, she insisted that Boruto continue trying to figure out on his own and only ask for help after he tried his hardest. Deciding to get some air, Boruto wandered into the village, where he bumped into Sarada. Suddenly, Boruto's eye activated again, noticing someone with the dark shadow. He decided to follow, discovering that it was Kagemasa, the famous movie star. Much to Boruto's shock, the celebrity had become very fat. Kagemasa began attacking Boruto, taking his frustrations out on the fact that his movie series was going to be cancelled because of his increased weight and poor dieting. As Kagemasa pinned Boruto down, he was saved by Sarada. As Boruto explained the situation, while she didn't fully believe the story, she did trust that Boruto wasn't lying. Following Boruto's plan, Sarada launched a shuriken assault on Kagemasa. Knowing that the movie star would dodge, Boruto disguised himself as one of the shuriken, letting himself get close enough to knock out Kagemasa, purging the ghost. The following day, after hearing that Kagemasa was getting back in shape and saving his movie series, a proud Boruto got over not having the Byakugan, determined to figure out the truth about his eye. After learning that his father was beginning an investigation of his own on the random attacks, Boruto became determined to figure out the truth behind the shadow, which Boruto decided to call it the ghost before Naruto. Alongside Mitsuki and Shikadai, they even resorted to skipping class with a faked excuse. Due to Mitsuki's poorly written excuse, Boruto was quickly found out and confronted by his visibly angry mother. The following day, Boruto was scolded by both Hinata and Shino, the latter of which decided Boruto would have to take after-school classes to make up for the lost time. Later, Shino assigned his class to tail other workplaces to better understand non-shinobi life. Seeing Boruto's desire to continue patrolling the village, he subtly convinced Boruto, Shikadai, and Mitsuki to try the postal service. While sorting stamps, they heard on the news that another attack happened at the water purification plant, where Sumire was. Boruto and his friend quickly rushed to her aid. After learning that Sumire was okay, Boruto and his friends were approached by Naruto. Realizing that the children were conducting their own investigation on the attacks, the Hokage decided to show them what became of people who were possessed by the ghost for prolonged periods, requiring intensive care from near-complete chakra depletion. While Naruto insisted they stay out of this matter, Shino appeared insisting that Naruto not underestimate his students after seeing what they were capable of, and Naruto agrees to leave the matter to Shino. As Boruto and his friends continued their post work and tried to find the ghost, they soon learned that the creature was intentionally attacking areas far away from Boruto as he is the only one who could see it, from which Shikadai deduced that they were being spied on. Deciding to get help from their classmates to better patrol the village, they left the post office, anticipating that the culprit controlling the ghost would go after the post chief Komame. 
Half the team went after the retreating mass culprit, while Boruto and his half stayed to subdue the possessed Komame. While saving the post chief, the ghost and culprit ultimately got away. As classes continued, Mitsuki continued to show noticeable interest in Boruto, ultimately asking if he can join him for dinner at his house, which he agreed to. On that night, Boruto was surprised to learn that Naruto would actually be joining them for dinner for a change. However, as dinner began, Naruto learned that a strange chakra was being dispersed throughout the village, prompting him to leave. Boruto was furious at this, seeing his father leave at the slightest notice. Seeing Naruto's duties as Hokage as someone who had sacrificed those closest to him for the sake of the entire village, he was determined to stop the ghost before Naruto to prove his father wrong on his methods. Mitsuki then revealed he knew who the culprit was. Mitsuki claimed it was Sumire. While Boruto rebuffed such a claim, he explained the nature of his investigation. Suddenly, there was a large earthquake, followed by the emergence of the ghost, now in a tangible form, who attacked the village. Boruto quickly rushed off to help. Mitsuki told Boruto that they can stop the creature if they kill the summoner. Boruto refused to kill his friend, prompting Mitsuki to restrain him with a snake clone, which he defeats after Mitsuki leaves. When he finds Mitsuki, he stops him by clashing with Sumire. She proclaimed that the girl they knew never existed. As Boruto's dojutsu activates, Nue arrives from a portal and takes Sumire into its dimension, leading to Boruto and Mitsuki following her. Inside, Boruto began looking for Sumire, only to be attacked by Nue. As his right eye realized the creature's weak point, Boruto and Mitsuki managed to immobilize it, leading to Sumire stepping in to defend it. Talking her out of revenge, Boruto comments that Nue won't blow them all up as it viewed Sumire as its parent. Letting go of her anger, the Gozu Tenno is weakened, leading to the dimension they reside in to begin crumbling. Boruto reached for Sumire and convinced her to join in escaping. When they arrive back in Konoha, Sumire is taken into custody by Sai Yamanaka. Before leaving, Boruto informs Sumire that Nue had survived. Some time later, Boruto realized that his eye's power had seemingly disappeared completely. Later, Shino decided to change up the three-man teams for the next challenge to determine the optimum pairings for graduation. Mitsuki insisted on staying on Boruto's team, and also teamed up with Lee. As rumors about Sumire's fate began to spread, Boruto confronted his father about it. Naruto insisted that while he has to think about the whole village and he does not have absolute say, he will help Sumire. The following day, during the team challenge to capture a flag, Mitsuki and Boruto's teamwork managed to win their match. Afterwards, to everyone's joy, Sumire returned to the class. Sarada Uchiha Arc In the anime, Boruto took care of Himawari when she became ill. After arguing with Naruto about Himawari's dinner, the two are kicked out of the house by Hinata. Naruto heard Boruto's stomach grumbling, leading to Naruto buying them dinner at Ramanichiraku. When the classes at the academy are dismissed early due to the Five Kage Summit taking place in Konoha, Boruto tried to convince his classmates to help him pull a prank. Believing that a successful prank despite all the security would be a testament to their abilities. They all refused, so he instead defaced the Hokage Rock by himself. He was stopped by Naruto, who ordered Boruto to clean up the graffiti, which Boruto suggested they do together. Naruto, however, reminded him that as Hokage, the entire village is like his family, and as such, he couldn't always make time for his children asking that Boruto endure the hardship of their frequent separation. As their graduation from the academy approached, Boruto and his classmates trained with their parents to prepare them for the final exams. Naruto sent one of his shadow clones to train with Boruto and the two spar. Boruto tried very hard to elude capture so as to prolong their time together. Because Naruto had other responsibilities that he needed to focus on, his advisor, Shikamaru Nara, caught Boruto with his shadow imitation technique so as to bring the game to an end. Naruto left the village on a mission shortly afterwards. Boruto is sent by his mother to see Naruto off and deliver lunch to him, but when he arrived, he found that Naruto had already left. Annoyed, Boruto decided to go home, despite Mitsuki's observation that they could still catch up to Naruto. At this suggestion, Sarada and Chocho Akimichi suddenly appeared and offered to deliver the lunch for him. Boruto reluctantly agreed. When they finally returned, Boruto thanked Sarada for what she did. She insisted that she should be thanking him, as she got a lot out of the experience and now decided she wanted to be Hokage. Boruto, however, scoffed at the idea. School Trip Arc Boruto is appointed class leader for his homeroom's class field trip to the Land of Water, much to his annoyance. Upon arriving in Kirigakure, they are met by their village guide, Kagura Karatachi. After personally introducing himself to Boruto, Kagura escorted the class into the village, where the class is amazed by the scenery. Boruto noticed Iwabi wandering off into a back alley, leading to Boruto and Denki pursuing him. There, the three are confronted by Hasaku Onomichi, who Boruto engages in a fight with. The skirmish is stopped by Shizuma Hoshigaki, who applauded Boruto and Iwabi for having guts before walking off with Hasaku. Later, the class met Meitorumi and Chojuro, and welcomed them to the village. Afterwards, the class continued their tour to the Kirigakure Academy, 
where Chojuro organized Boruto to fight Kagura in Kenjutsu. Upon starting, Boruto is swiftly disarmed and defeated. Shortly after, Kagura took the class to Memorial Park, where they paid their respects at the Memorial Stone. Afterwards, Kagura talks to Boruto and his classmates about the history of the Bloody Mist Village and the 4th Mizukage, before Surushi Hachiya's group approaches them. Realizing Boruto is the Hokage's son, Surushi attempts to attack Boruto, but Kagura and Iwabi fended him off, leading to him retreating with his friends. During the night, Boruto's classmates receive a message that Denki had been kidnapped, and tells them to come to Pier Number 4 if they want him back. Arriving at the pier with a few of his classmates and Kagura, Surushi reveals himself as the culprit, and erects a barrier around them before having his group attack the students. After defeating the Kiri Shinobi and returning to their hotel, Boruto invites Kagura to play a card game with him and his friends. While Kagura enjoys the game, he continues to lament about his past. Boruto insists that he can't let his family ties define him, as Boruto could relate to being compared to his father and grandfather. As a sign of friendship, Boruto decides to give Kagura his playing cards. The next day, Kagura calls Boruto to meet him at the academy where he finds Kagura training with Hiramikare and says their village will be in good hands. The conversation is interrupted when Shizuma captures the pair with water, who insists now is the time to start a revolution in Kiri. Rejecting Shizuma's words, Boruto unsuccessfully attacks him, leading to Shizuma's peers revealing themselves to overwhelm Boruto. In his weakened state, Shizuma attempts to persuade Kagura to kill Boruto, but Kagura protects him at the cost of joining the group. Failing to stop him going, he passes out. Later, Boruto awakens to Sarada beside him, who found him and applied first aid. Hachiya approaches the two and reveals Shizuma's intentions and how Kagura was in debt to him, leading to Boruto becoming determined to save Kagura. After Mei and Chojuro become aware that the new seven ninja swordsmen stole the village's seven ninja swords, Boruto and Sarada approach Mei and Chojuro and explain that Kagura's actions are due to Shizuma exploiting his weakness. Boruto insists that they treat the recent incident as a children's fight, leading to Chojuro allowing the two students to accompany him in stopping the swordsmen. As the swordsmen attempted to destroy Kiri's memorial stone, Boruto stopped them, leading to Shizuma erecting a mist barrier around the surrounding area and separating the three. Boruto then found himself fighting against Kagura, despite trying to reason with him. As Boruto continued to point out Kagura's reluctance to join his rebellion during their clash, Mitsuki arrived, revealing proof of Shizuma's lies. He revealed that Shizuma and his followers not only conspired with the Land of Waves, but also killing various people in Kirigakure who learned of his plans and refused to help him. When Shizuma took the allegations in stride, proud of his actions, he decided to finish the battle personally when Kagura refused to fight. He unleashed a blood mist that enabled him to absorb enemies' chakra through their open wounds. Boruto and Mitsuki's coordinated tag team enabled them to fight and overpower their foe. Refusing to accept defeat, Shizuma reclaimed Samehara, which backfired on him as his inexperience allowed Samehara to overwhelm him into a feral state. When Kagura wanted to make things right but was too exhausted, Boruto joined him, taking up half of Hiramekare, and together they were able to defeat their foe. The Konoha Nin then quickly ran back to their hotel to make curfew. Sometime after the incident, the class depart Kiri by boat, leading to Boruto wondering why Kagura didn't see them off. Upon returning to Konoha, Hinata reminds Boruto that he hadn't brought back a souvenir for Himawari as he promised. Unable to bring himself to tell his sister, Boruto lies and says he misplaced her souvenir of Kirigakure water cinnamon sweets, which he begins looking to get in the village. Upon retrieving them, he received a letter from Kagura which explained his situation. Taking from Kagura's boldness at confronting his mistakes, Boruto decided to give both his gift and admit his mistake to Himawari, which she accepted. Graduation Exams Arc As his class began preparing for graduation, Boruto was interviewed by Shino about his future goals as a ninja. Boruto, however, admitted that he never really considered what he wanted. Later, Boruto was met by a freelance reporter named Sukiya, who said he was doing an article on the graduating students. As Boruto aided the older ninja in interviewing the other students, Boruto was left amazed at how others already had thought so far ahead for their goals, even learning that some students planned to continue their studies in the academy to pursue careers outside ninja work. Boruto admitted to Sukiya that his original goal on becoming a ninja was just to prove himself better than his father, but otherwise had no goal. Sukiya assured Boruto that there's no shame in going through a period of carefree times, but one should always have a plan if they want to grow as a person. Inspired by the man's words, Boruto decided for his immediate goal to be to make sure he and his friends stayed close. During the Genin exams, Boruto easily passed the written test. Later, during the practical and final test, the class was brought to the training field. There, the entire class was set up to face Shino, Onko Mirarashi, Konohamaru, and Kakashi Harake for 24 hours. 
As the exam started, Boruto chose to stick with his friends as they worked to get past the teachers and reach Kakashi. Confronting the Kage, Kakashi quickly defeated Boruto, leading him to lecturing the student about lacking a resolve and that his influence on the class has led them to become unmotivated and ignorant on what it means to be a ninja, before revealing he was Sukiya. As Boruto continued to struggle free from Kakashi's hold, his fellow classmates provided enough distraction for him to escape. Later, while Wasabi treated his wounds, Boruto voiced his dismay at Kakashi's words. While Boruto apologized for being a bad influence, his friends strongly insisted that Kakashi was wrong, that Boruto has helped them all come so far despite their own personal problems. Convinced that they would still prove Kakashi wrong, the group realized the true nature of the test. Boruto then designed a plan for everyone to both save their captured teammates and get the bell. After succeeding in the first part, the group went to face Kakashi. As Kakashi continued to disparage Boruto, the boy refused to give up, teaming up with his classmates to attack. Kakashi easily repelled their assault, noting that they were still too scattered, but was then caught in a group string light formation. As Boruto struggled against the restraining Hokage to get the bell, time finally ran out. Despite their plan failing, Kakashi passed everyone, noting that they succeeded in the true goal of the test, teamwork and loyalty. Shino then revealed that everyone's headbands were in fact Konoha forehead protectors, proof of their full-fledged status. Soon after, Boruto was assigned to Team 3 with Mitsuki and Sarada, with their squad leader being Konohamaru. Soon, with unanimous decision, they pleaded to the Hokage so their squad could be changed to Team 7 instead of Team 3, a request Naruto granted. Genin Mission Arc Naruto presented Team 7 with their first mission, which involved aiding Green Banks against bandits. Upon arriving, the team learned that the bandits were actually ninja, resulting in Konohamaru questioning if they should continue the mission, as it was probably too difficult for a Genin to face train Shinobi. While Konohamaru discussed the matter with Kiri, the village is attacked by Ashimaru, leading to Boruto engaging him until Konohamaru fends off the assailant before retreating. Kiri explained that the Shinobi were attacking the village to pressure her into handing them the deed to the village's bridge. During the night, Team 7 discovered several villagers were being controlled by Genjutsu and subdued them. Discovering Kiri was abducted during the incident, Team 7 met with the perpetrators to exchange the deed for her. After the exchange occurred, Hidari and Ashimaru decided on killing them all, prompting Konohamaru to task the Genin in fleeing with Kiri. Pursued by Ashimaru, the Genin engaged the missing nin and defeated him using Boruto's stream with Mitsuki and Sarada. Completing the mission and returning to Konoha, Boruto asked about how his peers did during on their first missions and bragged about facing Shinobi. Byakuya Gang Arc After Boruto talked a would-be terrorist into giving up during a team mission at the Konoha Bank, they discover its vault was robbed during the distraction, which Sarada deduced was accomplished using ice release. From meeting with Katasuke Tono, the Genin realized where the vault's goods were being sold. Donning a disguise with Mitsuki, Boruto pretended to be interested in buying the stolen jewel. Attempting to apprehend the seller, their plan fails, leading to the thief retreating. Pursuing him, he leads them to a village, where he said he had already sold the stolen good and used the money to repair the village's water distribution system. Before retreating, the thief explains that his group are noble in their actions, unlike the rich who profit off the poor, leading to Boruto wondering about who was really in the wrong. With the continued thefts performed by the Byakuya gang throughout Konoha, Team 7 and other Genin teams were assigned to help stop the thieves only when accompanied by a higher ranked shinobi. During the afternoon, Boruto found Shikadai playing Shogi with Ryogi and showed him the limited edition game Katasuke gave him. Questioning if he and Ryogi had met before, Ryogi suggested it was someone else before leaving. Shortly after, the pair are confronted by a Byakuya gang member who is being pursued by Tamari. Requesting the two's assistance, Boruto attacked with its clones, followed by Tamari repelling the thief out of sight, resulting in them escaping. When protesters began accusing the Kaminariman company of corrupt practices, Boruto suspects that the Byakuya gang is behind it. That night, the newly graduated Genin teams are given section assignments in regards to handling the protesters by Kotaru Fuma before departing. While Team 7 is stationed in their position, Boruto noticed Team 10 breaking formation, leading him to investigating the matter. Learning that Shigadai believed the Ninjutsu Research Center is the Byakuya gang's real target, the four hurried into the building, where they discovered the thieves had stolen Katasuke's magnum opus. Tracking them using Katasuke's scientific tool, the group split, during which Boruto followed Shigadai, who chased after Gekko and another member. Confronting the thieves on the thunder train they jumped on, the Genin are trapped and Boruto placed under Genjutsu. Thinking Shigadai is an enemy, they fought until Shigadai released the Genjutsu. While Shigadai handled Ryogi, Boruto attempted to apprehend Gekko, but was pushed away and watched watched Gekko detach the train carriages to escape, assisting Shikadai the two free Ryogi from Gekko's Genjutsu. After Naruto captured Gekko, Boruto returned the magnum opus to Katasuke. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day When Konohagakure started a new annual holiday, Parent and Child Day, Boruto decided to pass on it. 
Instead, he decided to go train while letting Himawari spend the day with their father. When watching a parent-child food competition that pitted Choji and Chocho against outsiders, Boruto soon realized that the promoters of the competition were rigging the match against the Akamichi in fear of them winning the free food prize. Boruto stepped in to make sure the competition continued fairly. Later, he found to his surprise that Sasuke had returned to the village. He explained the situation of the new holiday and decided to back off on training with Sarada so she could enjoy the holiday with her traveling father. Later, after learning that Sarada was getting embarrassed and annoyed by Sasuke's naive attempts to bond with her, Boruto pointed that neither of them really knew much about each other, but rather should just enjoy their time together. Ultimately, Boruto's advice helped the Uchiha duo reconnect, and in gratitude, Sarada told Boruto his own advice about being more casual with his own father. That night, Boruto received a custom shuriken as a present from Naruto, and the two decided to train together for the remainder of the evening. Versus Momoshiki Arc in the anime, after completing a bodyguard mission, Boruto becomes frustrated as a pair of shinobi judge him for being the Hokage's son. Recalling that Naruto didn't turn up for his birthday party, he headed to the Ninjutsu Research Center where Kitasuke gave him a late birthday present. Returning home, Boruto promises Himawari that he'll make sure that Naruto comes home for her upcoming birthday. When the team gets their next mission, Konohamaru debriefs it before preparing to depart in an hour. While waiting, Boruto encounters Naruto, leading them apologizing for not coming home for his birthday the other day. Stating he doesn't care, Boruto made Naruto promise that he'll be home for Himawari's. Traveling to their destination by train, the team is informed one of the robbers they were hired to capture was already imprisoned in the village. Learning that the criminal's associates were all killed in the nearby mine, Team 7 ventured in to investigate, during which they're attacked by a white Zetsu. Using Konohamaru's strategy, the team eliminates the Zetsu. Going deeper into the Otsutsuki clan ruins, they discover white Zetsus decomposing, as well as a group of deceased Zetsu on fire prompting Konohamaru into telling them that this was the act of Sasuke. After Naruto was informed of the news, Konohamaru discussed the discovery with his clone, which annoyed Boruto that they were being left in the dark about the matter. Several months after graduating, during a mission to catch a rampaging bear, Konohamaru tested his kote. Boruto is very intrigued by the device. While later reporting the bear's successful capture to Naruto, Boruto brags that he could have completed the mission on his own. Naruto tried lecturing him on the importance of teamwork, which Boruto felt he has no right to do since they never spent time together. Rather than continue the argument, Boruto reminded Naruto that it was Himawari's birthday and warned him not to forget it before storming out. Sarada and Mitsuki track Boruto to a restaurant to give him an application for the next Chunin exams, which Konohamaru thinks they should enter. Boruto is uninterested despite the fact that they must all enter as a team and resumes playing his video game with Shikadai and Inojin, before running into Hinata and Himawari and returning home to celebrate his sister's birthday. Their celebration is cut short when Naruto's shadow clone disappears, enraging Boruto that his father couldn't be bothered to come to Himawari's birthday. When he heard a knock at the front door, he opened it and swung a punch, believing it was his father, but instead it was Sasuke who intercepted the attack. Looking for Naruto, Sasuke leaves. Shortly after, Boruto approaches him and asks for Sasuke to make him his student, which Sasuke accepts on the condition Boruto learned the Rasengan. Afterwards, Boruto went to Konohamaru's home and asked him to teach him the Rasengan, which Konohamaru eagerly agrees to. They started training the next day. He eventually learned to create a Rasengan on his own after several days of arduous training. He demonstrated it to Sasuke, who noted how small his Rasengan was. Boruto wrongly assumed this meant that Sasuke rejected him, so he borrowed the Kote from its inventor, Katasuke so that he can instantly create normal-sized Rasengan. Boruto demonstrates his Rasengan to Sasuke again. Although Sasuke noticed the Kote, he said nothing and agrees to train Boruto, during which he learns Shuriken Jutsu and his father's background. After their training and wishing to stand out in the Chunin exams, Boruto was persuaded by Katasuke to illegally use a Kote during the matches. On the day of the exam's first stage, the competing teams are given a true or false question. When Boruto and his team select their answer, they're dumped into a pit, which Boruto, assuming this means they've failed, makes no effort to save himself from. Sarada and Mitsuki prevent him from falling into the ink at the bottom of the pit, which is the first stage's true objective, and thus permits them to continue into the second stage. Naruto sends Boruto a congratulatory email when he hears the news. Boruto is upset that Naruto didn't at least get a Shadow Clone to send it instead. Three days later, during the second stage, sometime later, the teams compete against each other in games of Capture the Flag. When Sarada and Mitsuki go off to capture the opposing team's flag, Boruto defends their own, believing he and his four Shadow Clones give him an advantage over the other team's three members. When the three Senka brothers make two Shadow Clones each, Naruto is quickly outnumbered and his flag is nearly captured. While initially reluctant, he eventually uses the Kotei to perform a combination of elemental attacks to defeat them, allowing Boruto's team to continue to the finals. While Boruto recuperates at home later, Naruto visits him in person to state his pride in him and encourage him not to lose to Shikadai. Boruto remarks afterwards 
afterwards that Naruto's brief words could have been put in an email, but he is nevertheless moved to tears by his father coming to see him. On the day of the final exam, the competing Genin are scheduled in a series of one-on-one -on -one tournament matches, with Boruto facing Yorui. Unable to engage him, Boruto used his kote to defeat Yorui. Afterwards, Boruto faced Shikadai, where after being caught in his shadow, he relied on using his kote to pressure Shikadai into surrendering. Noticing Boruto's use of the tool, Naruto disqualified Boruto from the tournament and from being a ninja. Lashing out at his father for his actions, the venue was attacked by Momoshiki and Kinshiki Otsutsuki in their search for Naruto. Attacking Momoshiki in a panic with his kote, all his techniques are absorbed, before Naruto returned to save him and regroup with Sarada and Sasuke. Momoshiki then launched a barrage of elemental techniques towards the group, which Naruto blocked with Kurama's assistance. Naruto instructed Sasuke to focus on protecting Boruto and Sarada while he engaged Momoshiki, during which Boruto calls out to him before losing consciousness from Momoshiki's large-scale attack. Waking up in the hospital, he learned that Naruto was captured and runs to the Hokage's office, where he puts on his father's old jacket and feels guilty for his attitude towards him. He's then approached by Sasuke, who invited Boruto to rescue his father. Accompanied by the four Kage, the group departs through Sasuke's portal. Upon arriving on Momoshiki's planet, the Kage free Naruto and engage Kinshiki and Momoshiki. On seeing Boruto, Naruto tries to apologize for not being around more, but Boruto replies that it's okay although he asks that Naruto start telling him about when he was younger instead of lecturing him. Naruto joins the battle and Momoshiki, despite absorbing Kinshiki to try and gain the upper hand, is defeated. However, Katasuke arrives to lend assistance and attacks Momoshiki with the Kote, only to inadvertently rejuvenate him and allow him to capture the Kage. With encouragement from Sasuke, Boruto attacks Momoshiki with his small Rasengan, which forces him to release the Kage. Naruto is impressed that Boruto was able to learn the Rasengan and, still unable to move, adds his own chakra to Boruto's Rasengan, making it gigantic. Sasuke helps Boruto get a Shadow Clone close enough to Momoshiki to blind his Rinnegan with a kunai, preventing it from absorbing Boruto's Rasengan and thus leaving him unable to dodge it, killing Momoshiki. However, upon investigating the remains of the God Tree, Momoshiki reappears before Boruto, freezing time for everyone but himself and Boruto to give Boruto a cryptic warning that someone who defeats a god ceases to be a normal person, then places a seal on his palm. When Momoshiki fades away into mist, time resumes for everyone and they return to Konoha. In the anime, Boruto and Himawari share a belated birthday dinner, with Naruto even appearing in person instead of sending a shadow clone. After Boruto punched Naruto, thinking it was a shadow clone, Naruto began scolding him, while Himawari asked for a piggyback ride. Hinata maintained order by threatening to throw the cake away. A few days later, Boruto's life sees many changes back home. He starts over with a non-hacked video game character even though it makes the game more difficult. Naruto is home more often and Boruto is supportive of his grueling work schedule. Boruto, despite being caught cheating in the Chunin exams, becomes a minor celebrity thanks to his role in helping with the previous crisis, doing the same kinds of interviews that his father sometimes does. Boruto no longer has disdain for the Hokage title, though he doesn't want to be Hokage. Instead, he decides to support Sarada in her dream of being Hokage, just as Sasuke supports Naruto. Mitsuki finds that all the discussion about their parents interesting, but insists that Naruto and Sasuke have nothing on his parent, Orochimaru. Sarada is at first shocked, but then wonders whether Orochimaru is Mitsuki's mother or father, while Boruto, becoming continuously more frustrated by Mitsuki and Sarada ignoring his question, demands to know who Orochimaru is. At some point, Boruto tells Sasuke about the seal on his palm, to which he warns Boruto to be on guard. Chocho Arc In the anime, when the lead actors of a popular TV drama, Tomaru and Ashina, received death threats if they continued filming their show, Team 7 was assigned to protect the actors alongside Team 10. Boruto and his team were assigned to watch over Ashina, who much to their chagrin was a prima donna who basically made the team act as their personal servants. Later, a masked attacker managed to capture Tomaru. A ransom was left that demanded 20 million ryo and for Ashina to be the one to deliver it. Shigadai and Boruto noted that the situation was not making sense as the attackers suddenly changed tactics from murder to ransom. During the exchange, as Konohamaru already captured the attacker and disguised himself as the Ame Nin, Ashina was revealed to be the mastermind behind the assault, as she desperately wanted to rekindle her fame as an actress. In a last blind effort to keep her fame by burying the truth, she attempted to blow up the arena. While Konohamaru stopped her from using them, the explosive tags went off, causing a landslide, which the Konoha Nin quickly saved the spectators from. Afterwards, Ashina was arrested. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc in the anime, during another Kage summit in Konoha, Team 7 encountered Onoki, who they guided around the village on a tour. Afterwards, the Kage informed the Genin what the hardest stone was. The next day, all missions were suspended due to an attack at the village's gate, which Boruto and Sarada eventually learned involved Mitsuki, who was being branded as a traitor as well as him being the son of Orochimaru. 
Not believing his teammate was a traitor, Boruto ventured to where the attack took place, during which he found one of Mitsuki's snakes that said his actions were of his own will. Despite the village being in lockdown, Boruto and Sarada decided to go to Orochimaru's laboratory with the snake for answers. Upon arriving, he learned that Mitsuki was one of the many clones before meeting Orochimaru. Boruto showed Orochimaru the snake Mitsuki left behind in hopes of finding any hidden messages. Unable to extract information from it, he suggested they consult the White Snake Sage about the matter. On their way to the Ryuchi Cave, they were blocked by Team 10. While managing to separate Moegi Kazamatsuri from her team, Boruto and Sarada were subdued by the Genin. When Shigadai learned of Mitsuki's snake containing a message, he decided to aid the pair in their journey, followed by his teammates joining them. Upon the group arriving at a foggy canyon, three women orchestrated trials for Boruto to go through in order for the Genin to gain entrance to the Ryuchi Cave. Having passed, the group entered the cave and met the White Snake Sage, who agreed to analyze the snake if the shinobi brought her Garaga's reverse scale, which they agreed to. Soon after, the group were attacked by Garaga, prompting Aoda to come to Sarada's aid and allow the shinobi to escape. Afterwards, Aoda introduced itself to the shinobi, leading to them devising a plan to acquire the scale. After engaging the snake again, Boruto became connected with Garaga's mental plane, during which Garaga said he wished to see Boruto's hopes being crushed. Deciding not to take the scale, Boruto instead entered a summoning contract with the snake, on the condition that he could eat the shinobi if Mitsuki had betrayed Boruto. Returning to the sage, he presented the scale to her by summoning Garaga, prompting her to show Mitsuki's snake's memories to the shinobi. Learning that Mitsuki had actually saved Uo's life and that he was being accompanied to the land of Earth, the shinobi depart the cave to find him. As the group began to approach the land of Earth's border, Shigadai had Inojin and Chocho to return to the village to report their findings. As the other Genin continued their pursuit, they found the remains of a clay creature, which Boruto recognized as the same thing that attacked Mitsuki's snake. Their group soon found a group of Konoha Jonin who were defeated by one of the gate attackers, Kokuyo. The man quickly revealed himself to be an artificial being with superhuman augmented abilities. As the Genin were quickly pressured by him, Inojin and Chocho arrived to help. The Ino Shikacho trio decided to hold them off as Boruto and Sarada went off ahead. They were intercepted by another one of the gate attackers, Sekie, who noted that Mitsuki was with them willingly. He initially held them off with his explosive clay until Boruto summoned Garaga, who initially refused to help until his might was questioned by Boruto. As Sekie struggled to dodge Garaga's attack, his body suddenly gave out. While Boruto attempted to finish him off, Mitsuki appeared to save him. He made his intention to join the artificial humans clear as he subdued Boruto before departing. Soon afterwards, the Ino Shikacho trio returned and took care of Boruto while he was unconscious. Awakening, the group decided to venture to Iwagakure to seek the help of Anoki. Infiltrating the village, the Genin were noticed by Akatsuchi and taken to Anoki, who was happy to see Boruto. Informing the elderly man of their goal to find Mitsuki, Onoki's attitude turned dark and turned them away. The shinobi found themselves surrounded by Akutug being controlled by Ku, who revealed himself to be in league with Onoki to everyone's shock. As Onoki began explaining the nature of his plans and his genuine desire to protect people, realizing that with a secret out in the open, he would have to accelerate his plans before the other great shinobi countries learned. While Onoki told his son to gently take the prisoners away, Boruto and the others chose to resist, and a fight ensued during which Boruto fled with Onoki after saving him from being crushed. Unknowingly venturing in the Sanzu Plains, the two became trapped until being joined by Seki, who assisted the pair in escaping. After leaving Seki, Onoki again talked about the true nobleness of his goals, saying he wants to save lives. Wanting to prove his point, he decided to take Boruto to a site where his grandson was killed. There, Onoki justified his plan to replace Shinobi with Akuta, but Boruto rejected his vision. Being discovered by Kako, Boruto fought him, during which he was joined by Sarada and Chocho. While on the verge of being killed, Kako succumbed to his injuries and died. Afterwards, the shinobi are rejoined by Inojin under Kirada's genjutsu, who then takes Boruto hostage, forcing his group to be captured and taken back to Iwa. Discovering the village had been taken over by Ku, Onoki didn't agree with his creation, leading to Ku knocking the man unconscious. Shikadai appeared and helped his allies escape. As the Ino Shikacho trio decided to face off against Kokuyo, Boruto and Sarada faced Kirara. Managing to flee and catching up with Mitsuki, the pair were immobilized by Ku and were shocked when Mitsuki betrayed him, forcing Ku to retreat to attend to his decaying body. Going after him while Mitsuki faced Sekie, the pair faced Kirara and her giant Akuta. Summoning Garaga to destroy the golem, it collapsed on top of Kirara, leading to her being killed. Regrouping with Mitsuki at the old city, they discovered Ku, who had successfully transplanted a human heart into himself to stabilize his body. Engaging him in battle, Boruto and Sarada became trapped under rubble, during which Seki freed them. Afterwards, Boruto brought Onoki to Ku after the Kage had a change of heart and wished to stop his creation. 
Crippling Ku with his Rasengan, Ku attempted to kill the Genin with his Dust Release, which prompted Onoki to intervene and sacrifice himself to kill their opponent. Afterwards, the Genin approached the drained Suchikage, who spoke to them about the importance of keeping one's will strong before passing away. Team 7 was then found by their allies from Konoha, and they all welcomed Mitsuki back. Returning home, Garaga contacted Boruto to inform him that their contract was up, and the two parted ways. The following day, Boruto and Sarada were punished for their technical desertion by having their shinobi status revoked. Mitsuki apologized for his recent actions and admitted to the shameless curiosity of wanting to connect with people that were more like him. Boruto, however, quickly accepted his apology and admitted he was glad that he got the chance to better understand Mitsuki as a person, hoping to learn more about each other, with Sarada also agreeing to it. Later, due to Kurotsuchi's gratitude and recommendation, it was decided that Team 7's Genin shinobi status would be restored. Jugo Arc in the anime, some time later, Team 7 and the Genin of Team 15 went on a mission to investigate attacks on a village from its wildlife. Accompanied by Tosaka, the group were attacked by birds and separated. Finding himself attacked by a monstrous man, Boruto was saved by Nue. Entering the village, the shinobi discovered victims of the attack were sick and covered in Juinjutsu, during which the villagers found an unconscious Jugo. Questioning him, a sick villager went on a rampage and was swiftly subdued by Jugo, who made the Juinjutsu disappear and warned Boruto to stay away from the forest before fleeing into it. Entering to investigate, the shinobi split up, and Boruto and Sarada discovered Jugo transforming in a cave. Engaging in battle, Jugo was repelled away by Konohamaru. After Konohamaru snapped Jugo out of his bloodlust, Boruto and the others followed him until they found him passed out with an injection device. Jugo woke up and they were attacked by another bird, but Jugo removed the bird's cursed seal before Boruto could attack it. Back at the village, Boruto was among those tasked with monitoring Jugo and looking out for more of the tranquilizer drug that suppresses the cursed seal. They watched as the strain of curing the birds caused him to transform, retreating to his cave. After the episode, Boruto refused to leave and continued investigating. When researchers from the Land of Rivers asked for information, Boruto lied and said they knew nothing. Boruto administered a tranquilizer dose on Jugo during his next episode, his commitment to helping the birds earning his trust. Over the next couple days, the group continued working on the birds. Boruto spotted a domesticated goose among the wild ones, and Tosaka commented on its species having lost the ability to fly. Despite having been convinced by Sarada to take his shots regularly to avoid transformations, Jugo still retreated to his cave, as he was building up an immunity to the medication. Boruto and Sarada go over the remaining shots and wondered about their options once they ran out. On the third day, the group woke up to bird sounds, Tosaka telling Boruto the remaining infected birds transformed and escaped, Jugo having gone after them. They found Jugo struggling to contain another transformation, but due to his shots being missing at his compound, Jugo transformed and rampaged to the village. Subdued by the researchers, they revealed to the villagers that the Konoha Shinobi knew of Jugo's identity, leading to them turning against them. Learning that Wasabi and Namida were unconscious and infected with cursed seals, they requested Tosaka help them with his expertise. After the Genin reluctantly left the village, they found Sumire after she was knocked out by Suigetsu, who insisted he acted in self-defense. When learning Suigetsu and Karin were looking for Jugo, the Genin explained that Jugo was apprehended by the researchers. When Sumide awoke, she explained that two assailants who captured Wasabi, Izuno, and Namida Suzumeno had special collars on them that let them harness cursed seals of their very own. Realizing that this duo was working with the Land of Rivers researchers, they concluded that the outbreak must have been started by them. As the group separated to handle parts of the rescue, Suigetsu joined Boruto in finding Jugo. Locating Tosaka, he led them to Jugo, during which he subdued them with tranquilizers and revealed that he was in league with the researchers and cursed sealed operation. As Tosaka explained his motivations and Boruto admonished him for his treatment of Jugo, Jugo broke free of his restraints and begged Boruto to flee. Pursuing Jugo to the lake, Boruto attempted to attack a cursed seal transformed Tosaka, but he shrugged off his attack and restrained him. Jugo defeated Tosaka and freed Boruto, leading to him targeting the Genin. Saved by Nue, Boruto formulated a plan to revert Jugo's transformation that relied on Jugo's speed to increase the damage of his Rasengan. Boruto used two consecutive Boruto streams to build up his own speed, and the damage only made Jugo's transformation recede at the last instant. Mitsuki arrived with Konohamaru and Suigetsu, who consumed the serum to cure the birds and merged with the lake to rain it over them. Afterwards, Sarada admonished Boruto on the recklessness of his plan, who pointed out that it worked, and the two wondered what would Jugo do next. Konoha Shinden, Steam Ninja Scrolls In the anime, while joining Shikadai and Shikamaru for a meal, they encountered Mirai, who was getting ready for a mission to escort the 6th Hokage and Might Guy. 
When they returned, Boruto was shocked to learn Mirai's mission ended up saving several girls from remnants of the near-forgotten Jashin cult. Later, after Shigadai is selected as the first of their graduating class to be promoted to Chunin, Boruto was selected to join Shigadai on his first mission as team captain. They were joined by Iwabi and Wasabi to retrieve a rare but potent medical flower called the Gekora, which only blooms very rarely and just as quickly wilts. They were also given a special tracking pig named Tansuke, who could locate the flowers by scent. The mission progressed roughly as Wasabi and Iwabi kept bickering with each other. The mission became even more difficult when they were attacked by bandits who stole Tansuke. Fed up with his teammates not listening to him, Shikadai decided to handle the rest of the mission alone. As Boruto caught up to Shikadai, he realized that his best friend had injured his leg. While Shikadai struggled to think of how to handle this on his own, Boruto reminded him why he was made Chunin to begin with his intelligence and loyalty to his allies. Iwabi and Wasabi then caught up, allowing the friends to make amends. Together, the team was able to rescue Tansuke while capturing the bandits and securing the flower to complete their mission. Konohamaru's Love Arc In the anime, Konohamaru and Boruto saw a woman running away from several men in the village, prompting Konohamaru to rescue her from them. Introducing herself as Remon Yoimura, a sightseer, Boruto showed her around the village, during which she and Konohamaru became fond of each other. Later, it was revealed that Remon was a noblewoman who was dodging her bodyguards and had the responsibility to return. The following day, after Sarada and Chocho pointed out Konohamaru's growing feelings, Boruto suggested that he and his sensei return Remon's borrowed handkerchief as an excuse to see her. Upon arriving at her mansion, they were surprised to see Remon preparing for a ceremony and uncharacteristically demanded that they never see her again. They were approached by Remon's fiance, Kankitsu Akitsuki, who asked the pair to leave. Having found a lost girl from Dai Dai Village, they returned the child home, during which they felt something was wrong and snuck back into Remon's home to talk with her. Learning about her village being plagued by a memory-stealing spirit that her ancestors sealed away at the cost of her descendants being cursed, the pair were also informed that a special marriage ritual was needed to restore the weakened seal. Accepting that this was Remon's choice, Konohamaru decided to take Boruto back to Konoha. Before they could, Remon's caretaker, Asaki, asked the pair to investigate Kankitsu, as he had recently begun acting out of character. Accepting the request, the two found nothing unusual. While waiting for Asaki to show up to report to, Boruto discovered Asaki had lost her memory of their encounter. As she brushed him off, he followed Asaki, who was following Kankitsu, into a cave. There, Kankitsu was preparing to destroy Remon's hair clip, only to be stopped by Asaki. Watching as a mysterious energy was emitted from Kankitsu, Boruto protected Asaki from the new threat, during which Asaki shielded Boruto from an attack and collapsed. Boruto soon found himself in a similar outcome, but while the hair clip suppressed some of the effects, Boruto forgot the last few days. Returning to Konoha, he was amazed to hear about Konohamaru being placed under house arrest for trespassing into a nearby village. As Boruto began experiencing recent things throughout the village, he ultimately regained his memories. He reported to Konohamaru that it was Kankitsu who was stealing people's memories. Despite the house arrest, Konohamaru joined Boruto in settling the matter. Upon returning to the village, Kankitsu, who was possessed, destroyed the seal to free Soma. Unable to defeat the demon, Remon sealed it at the cost of her memories. Konohamaru decided to leave Remon in Kankitsu's care, despite Boruto insisting that he should tell Remon how he felt about her. One Tail Escort Arc In the anime, as everyone had time off for missions, Boruto's family was preparing to go on a camping trip with Hinata's side of the family. Boruto, however, was growing bored and wished to resume training under his mentor Sasuke. After noticing Sasuke's hawk flying into the village, he snuck into the Hokage's office building and discovered Sasuke was heading to the Land of Wind. Seeing this as an opportunity to meet up with him, Boruto lied to his family about being assigned a training mission before sneaking onto a train to the Land of Wind. There, he discovered Sasuke and Gara fighting Urashiki, during which Sasuke transported to another dimension. Being prevented to engage Urashiki by Gara, the Kazakage managed to temporarily seal the Otsutsuki who was targeting Shukaku for its chakra. Shukaku seals itself into a tea kettle in order to not be sensed, leading to Gara entrusting Boruto alongside with Shinki and Kankoro with escorting the tailed beast to Konoha. Along the way, the three were intercepted by Urashiki puppets, leading to Kankoro facing the threat alone while Boruto and Shinki went on ahead. Noticing an explosion where Konkoro was, Shinki insisted on heading on, while Boruto refused to leave Konkoro when he needed them most. Returning to the scene alone, he encountered Tamari and Shikadai. They found evidence of a hole being dug as a means to escape the explosion, prompting the Konoha Nin to catch up with Shinki. When they did, they discovered he was facing a damaged puppet. While Tamari and Shikadai held off the puppet, Boruto helped Shinki and Shukaku get to safety before returning to defeat the puppet. Afterwards, it was decided that Boruto would head on with Shinki while Tamari tended to her wounds with Shikadai and resumed their search for Konkoro. Knowing Urashiki would soon escape and intercept them again at the Land of Fire border, they decided Boruto would distract Urashiki with a clone disguised as Shinki and carry an empty tea kettle, while Shukaku and Shinki went on ahead. 
While distracting Urashiki for a period of time, the foe soon realized the truth and decided to take Boruto as hostage for the Hokage. Shinki, however, decided to return to the battlefield to aid Boruto. As Boruto and Shinki struggled to fend off Urashiki, Boruto's Jogon activated, leading to him being able to perceive Urashiki's dimensional hopping. Managing to injure Urashiki, the pair was saved by Sasuke, who forced their foe to retreat. Brought back to Konoha to be treated, Boruto saw Shinki off at the Thunder Rail Station. Afterwards, Shukaku stayed at the Uzumaki house for a brief period until a safe house was organized, during which Naruto informed Boruto about the tailed beasts. Time Slip Arc in the anime, after being told by Hinata he was just like Naruto at that age, always eager to train with his mentor Jiraiya, Boruto became intrigued to learn more about the Sanin. He then went to Sasuke's house only to find Sarada. Together, the pair decided to search for the author's Icha Icha series, during which different adults insisted that they were too young to read his adult books. Later, when Boruto learned that he was the only genin that was not on the mission to hunt Urashiki due to Urashiki's vendetta against Boruto, Sasuke suggested that he work with Boruto as a two-man team while staying within the village, which Naruto agreed to. That night, the majority of the village's shinobi left the village in an attempt to corner Urashiki. Acknowledging that Naruto was too well guarded for Urashiki to go after, Boruto deduced Urashiki was after an artifact recently found that bore the Otsutsuki symbol. His hunch led him and Sasuke to discover Urashiki activating the artifact to create a portal that he entered. Following him, Sasuke managed to separate Urashiki from the item before being transported away with him. Arriving in Konoha, the pair discovered they have made it back to the past, shortly after Tsunade became Hokage. Realizing Urashiki's plan was to acquire Kurama's chakra from Naruto as a child, Sasuke asked the artifact Karasuki about the enemy which explained that due to Sasuke's interference, Urashiki would not arrive in this time period for a few days, and warned them to avoid as much interaction with the past as possible, or risk severe changes to the timeline. Listening to the advice, Sasuke and Boruto disguised themselves. Soon afterwards, Boruto and Sasuke bumped into Naruto and Jiraiya. When Tsunade arrived, they claimed to be traveling performers. Tsunade had Naruto and Jiraiya guard the pair, which soon after, Jiraiya left Naruto to take care of alone. After Sasuke slipped away to keep his distance, Naruto brought Boruto to his house, during which Boruto noted the resemblance between his father's young and current self. Later, Boruto would continue intriguing Naruto about the modern advances of the village that he comes from. He then met the Konoha Eleven, amazed at how the future parents were in childhood. Later, Naruto was assigned to clean up the hot spring as punishment for his and Jiraiya's commotion there the other day. Boruto and the other Genin helped out. Over the following days, Boruto deduced the truth about past Sasuke's absence, thanks to him abandoning the village. He confronted his master about the event, who shamefully admitted that at the time he was so fixated on getting revenge. The following day, Urashiki arrived and found Naruto, where Boruto and Sasuke stood prepared to fight and protect Naruto. Capturing Naruto, Urashiki encased Boruto, Sasuke, and Jiraiya in rubble before fleeing. Sasuke explained to Jiraiya that he and Boruto were actually ninja from a distant village with a mission to stop Urashiki from stealing Kurama's chakra. Jiraiya decided to work with the duo, breaking them free by summoning a giant toad. Soon, Sasuke locked onto Naruto's location. They learned that the seal containing Kurama was stopping Urashiki from stealing the demon's chakra, leading to Jiraiya placing a seal on the pair to protect them. Upon finding Naruto, Urashiki's actions forced the boy into his version 1 state, leading to Naruto accidentally attacking Boruto while Urashiki fled. After Naruto regained consciousness, Jiraiya began training the pair of Genin, instructing Boruto and Naruto on how to synchronize their chakra for the goal of developing a unique cooperation jutsu, the task was too difficult for them. Returning to the village alone, he encountered his relative Neji Hyuga, who cheered Boruto up after talking about Naruto's struggles. The following day, Naruto and Boruto made amends with each other and began resuming their training. While they began making progress, completing the task still proved very difficult. They were then approached again by Urashiki, who began toying with them with his various stolen techniques before subduing them. Deciding their foe's newest technique was too dangerous, Sasuke tackled himself and Urashiki over the ledge and into the river to let his allies escape. While tending to Jiraiya's wounds, the group tried to figure out how to deal with Urashiki. Boruto then realized that in the fight, the blood splattered on Urashiki was drying much faster than Boruto's. After engaging the foe again to test a theory, they concluded that Urashiki's technique lets him warp into the past by several seconds, giving him a pseudo-clairvoyance from his experiences. Urashiki then attacks the Konoha Nin again, where Jiraiya then contained everyone in his summoning, Toad Mouth Bind, during which Naruto unleashed a continued barrage of clones on Urashiki. While he easily countered the assault with his technique, Urashiki inadvertently poisoned himself from the acidic vapors of the Great Toad's belly far sooner than the Konoha Nin due to his repeated time warp. Once Jiraiya released the summoning, Boruto and Naruto then proceeded to knock out Urashiki with a Rasengan assault. Still defiant, the enraged Urashiki awoke and consumed all his accumulated chakra, along with his very own eyes. 
The final result transformed him into a fiendish being of immense physical might. Jiraiya and the two Genin were quickly overwhelmed by Urashiki's continued assaults, even with the aid of the returning Sasuke. Urashiki deliberately held back on Naruto, hoping to anger him enough into unleashing the Ninetales Chakra. His efforts ultimately succeeded and Naruto went into a rampage. Boruto, however, managed to reach Naruto, and together they were able to perfect their new collaboration technique. With the combined effort of Jiraiya and Sasuke, the two kids were able to plow through Urashiki's final attack and obliterate him. Soon after, with their mission completed, Sasuke erased everyone's minds of meeting the time travelers before he and Boruto returned to their proper time. Sometime later, after Sumire Kake resigned from her Genin team to join the Scientific Ninja Weapons team, Boruto joined his friends in a farewell party for the former class rep. They had also met Sumire's replacement for Team 15, Tsubaki Kurogane, a samurai student from the Land of Iron. Later, as Hiyashi's birthday was fast approaching, Boruto was concerned on what to get his grandfather as a present at his party. Ultimately, he went to Kuranai Yuhi for advice, since she had some history with the Hyuga clan leader. While Kuranai felt she couldn't pry into such personal matters, she insisted to Boruto that any heartfelt gesture to his grandfather would be greatly appreciated. She told him about the Hyuga affair and how it really left a lasting impression on Hiyashi, making him value family more than ever. From this, Boruto decided to swallow his pride for his grandfather and have a family photo, suggesting they do it annually as a present to Hiyashi, which indeed was greatly appreciated by the man. Mujina Bandit's Arc In the anime, Boruto was assigned an undercover mission at Hozuki Castle to protect the Mujina bandit's former member Kokori from Tsukiyo, in exchange for information on their dealings and leadership. At the prison, while Sarada posed as a reporter, Boruto and Mitsuki posed as thieves. Having the support of the warden, Mujo applied a fake imprisonment technique on the pair. Inside, they were assigned to share a cell with Kadama, Kamata, and Arai, the former of which informed Boruto what it required to get sent into the medical ward, which was where Kokori resided. Consuming a poisonous fruit in order to be sent there, Boruto made contact with Kokuri, and while returning to the prison, he discovered that he had been stabbed in the access-restricted ward. After Boruto was discharged from the ward, he had Mitsuki contact Sarada with his snake to have the warden move Kokuri to their cell for better protection. After succeeding, they learned that one of the prison's special access cards was missing for three days. As the guards began looking for it, Mitsuki realized the card must have been stolen by one of their cellmates when Boruto was being taken to the medical ward. Ultimately, they discovered Arai to be the assailant, leading to him being taken away. Later, the team managed to trick Kokori into revealing that he had donated money he stole from the Mujina bandits, prompting Boruto to promise to get Kokori to Konoha's safety. After Moju fell ill and Benga decided to have Kokori transferred to Hozuki Castle Number 2 where he couldn't be protected, it was decided to break Kokori out of jail before the transfer could happen. Learning of a supply ship that regularly comes to the prison, and that a large amount of water would be needed to counter Kokori's imprisonment technique, Team 7 sabotaged the water line, knowing it would force the guards to use a backup line that they could gather water from. As the night drew closer, and there was still no sign from Sarada about her part of the mission, the group grew concerned. Boruto was determined to trust Sarada and move forward with the plan. While Kokori was concerned by Sarada's lack of communication, Boruto remained steadfast. On their way to the water tank, the group was attacked by Benga's summon, which Mitsuki was able to defeat. However, the tank had been drained by Benga, who along with his summon was able to catch up with them. Sarada arrived just in time to save them with information she acquired from Kadama. On the outside, Boruto and the others were attacked by Mujina's second-in-command, Sukiyo. Using his array of shadow manipulation techniques, he was able to pressure the Genin. Growing desperate, Kokuri gave Boruto a notebook of all the data he had on the Mujina bandits in case he didn't survive. As the Konoha Nin began to tire, Kokuri saw through the enemy technique's weakness to light, giving the Konoha Nin the knowledge they needed to overpower and defeat their foe. In a last-ditch effort, Tsukiyo grabbed Kokuri and dragged the man with him off the ledge and into the ocean. Kokuri then emerged, claiming that Tsukiyo drowned. Soon after, Sai and a group of Konoha Nin appeared, having been mobilized by Naruto after losing contact with Mujo for so long. With Benga being killed by Tsukiyo and Mujo having recently recovered to resume his duties, Team 7's mission was completed, taking Kokori with them to the village to verify his intel on the Mujina bandits before releasing him. Several months later, while Team 7 was on a mission, Boruto kept thinking about his seal. However, he soon regained his senses and managed to defeat the robbers his team were trailing but in the process ruined their objective of letting one escape in order to track him to his boss. Afterwards, Boruto bought some shinobi collecting cards before Lee arrived and told him that Konohamaru requested his presence at the Hokage building. When he got there, Konohamaru tasked him with the mission of protecting Tento Madoka for the next few days. Later, at Tento's request, Boruto demonstrated various ninjutsu. 
Eventually, Tento showed off his near-complete collection of Shinobi collecting cards. When Boruto was amazed that Tento had the one card he wanted despite how rare and expensive it was, Tento offered to give Boruto the card he desired if he would teach him some ninjutsu. While not liking Tento's attitude on trying to buy his way towards anything, he decided to teach Tento nonetheless. As Boruto began teaching him shuriken jutsu, Tento quickly became discouraged at how he couldn't even properly throw a shuriken. As Tento explained his desire to become a ninja was to make his father notice him, Boruto, able to relate, reminisces about the things he did to make Naruto notice him, insisting that some things cannot be bought. Encouraging Tento to keep working at it, the boy gradually improved his technique until finally hitting the target. Proud of himself for succeeding, Boruto encouraged him to keep practicing to find his own path. Later, Boruto gave Tento the 7th Hokage card he was missing for his collection. After the three days of bodyguarding passed, Tento asked if he could visit Boruto again, which Boruto agreed to as they were now friends. Later, Boruto and his team were delighted to be issued their first B-rank mission. As he was about to prepare for his mission, he noticed the ultra-rare trading card he desired was in his pocket. Realizing that Tento slipped it in, Boruto decided to return it. While sneaking into Tento's room, he overheard the daimyo saying that Tento was kidnapped by the Mujina bandits. Determined to save his new friend, Boruto asked Sarada to tell their team he couldn't join them on the mission because of an important matter. Boruto soon found Tento just in time to stop Shojoji from eating his brain for his jutsu. Subduing the other bandits there, Boruto engaged Shojoji in battle during which his attacks were repelled by Shoujoji's wind release. As Shoujoji began proclaiming how he would eat Boruto, he found a shuriken lodged into his back, which Tento threw. Enraged at his captive attacking him, Shoujoji forgot about Boruto, allowing him to knock Shoujoji out with his Rasengan. Attempting to defeat him with another Rasengan, Boruto's mark painfully spread, leading to him becoming paralyzed, and Shoujoji becoming horrified at the thought of him being part of a certain organization. As Boruto insists he's clueless to such a thing, Shoujoji resumes his attack, only to be subdued and knocked out by Mitsuki and Sarada, respectively. Realizing that his teammates abandoned their B-rank mission to help him, Boruto apologized to them as the mark receded back into his palm and the pain stopped. Later, Boruto and his teammates were scolded by Konohamaru for abandoning their mission, insisting that there would be punishment. When Tento prepared to leave the village, Boruto gave him back the rare card, insisting that he has to get one on his own. Kara Actuation Arc in the anime, as Boruto grew impatient on how to deal with Kara and his Kama, Sasuke approached him and instructed Boruto to keep his mark concealed at all times to not draw attention. Later, Boruto and his team were assigned to work with Mugino to find Anato, a missing researcher in the Land of Valleys. After meeting the man's wife and learning about the village's large medical company, they were able to find out the last known location of Anato's team. There, they were intercepted by Victor and his guards, who were also looking for him. Joining efforts, Team 7 found Anato, whose body was altered into a malleable state and mindlessly attacked them. Unable to restrain him, Victor's men subdued him. Viewing the act as ruthless, Victor insisted there wasn't an alternative. With their mission technically completed, the Konoha Nin decided to return to the Konoha Gakure. Along the way, Mitsuki became ill and his body was taking on the same properties as Anato. Mugino brought them to Yubina. The doctor was able to treat Mitsuki and determined that during the fight with Anato, Mitsuki was infected by Hashirama Senju's cells. Revealing other cases like this have shown up, Yubina informed the shinobi that there was a rumor that the Land of Silence's black market was selling the cell. Leaving Mitsuki to recover, the team infiltrated Curtain Village to search for the item. There, they learned that a worker from Victor's company came by weeks ago with the Hashirama cell before suddenly disappearing. They also heard rumors that a man was in the area with connections to the Hashirama cell. It turned out to be a missing nin named Kirisaki with unique medical ninjutsu prowess. Boruto was able to detain him, leading to Konohamaru disguising himself as the missing nin. Joined by Boruto posing as his assistant, they met a butler who was infected by the cell as a test to see Kirisaki's skill. After the man collapsed, Konohamaru reluctantly used the antibodies Yubina acquired from Mitsuki to heal the man. Fooled, the man revealed to be a butler of Sakuya. She desired to use the Hashirama cell on herself under the misguided delusion that it would let her live forever and even more, restore her youth and former beauty. At Fushu Castle, Boruto was suddenly detained, where the butler wished to see the process firsthand of how Kirisaki would stabilize the Hashirama cell using Boruto. Konohamaru was able to stall while Boruto slipped away to retrieve the target as it was a shadow clone that was detained. Upon finding Sakiya's quarters, he found that she was murdered and the cell was gone. A group of quadruplet ninja revealed to have stolen the cell and framed Boruto for the murder while they retreated from the castle. As Boruto and Konohamaru joined up with Sarada and Mugino, everyone in the city began hunting them down in hopes of getting a reward for their capture. Upon being cornered, they were aided by a young boy named Katara. He led them through an underground network that the children of the city used for their own society. At the base, the Konoha Nin met up with Mitsuki. 
After he fully recovered and his antibodies helped cure Kona, she helped Mitsuki sneak into the city. The children's network was able to quickly find the true killers. Once outside the country's borders, Boruto and his fellow Genin split up from Mugino and Konohamaru to find their targets. However, they were quickly attacked by new enemies. The attackers were revealed to be Kumonin, consisting of Omoe, Kakui, and Marui. Having heard rumors that Konoha Nin killed Lady Sakuya and stole the Hashirama cell, they interrogated the Genin. Mugino and Konohamaru quickly returned and cleared things up. After explaining the situation, the groups worked together to hunt down the true culprits, who were deduced to be shinobi from the Land of Haze. Along the way, they were intercepted by Deepa, who was also looking for the Hashirama cell. Omoe's team decided to face the new threat while the Konoha Nin moved on. Soon after, Mugino and his team were intercepted by one of the thieves, Yuga, who was determined to complete his mission of delivering the Hashirama cell to his land at all cost. He unleashed a self-sacrificing technique to ensnare the Konoha Nin in a barrier and summon a destructive demon. The Genin tried to hold off the demon while Mugino and Konohamaru attempted to destroy the barrier, but were quickly stopped by the demon. Changing tactics, Mugino restrained the demon, letting it absorb his chakra long enough for Boruto and Konohamaru to destroy the demon with their respective Rasengan. Later, after Mugino recovered enough, the team then resumed tracking the Haze Nin. Upon catching up with the remaining foes, the Konoha Nin were tricked and caught by Hyuga's self-sacrificing technique that produced a restraining sludge. While his allies pointed out that the technique would drag all near him underground, Boruto tried to reason with Hyuga, telling him not to so recklessly sacrifice himself. Hyuga, however, rebuffed the plan viewing Boruto as a spoiled brat from a great country while the land of Haze is impoverished. Suddenly, a battered Omoe appeared. He revealed that a new enemy killed his allies and was on his way to the land of Haze to get the Hashirama cell. Worrying for his remaining brother, Hyuga cancelled his technique and rushed off. While Omoe could not join his allies, he warned them that Deepa was seemingly impervious to all forms of attack. Upon catching up to Hyuga's older brother, Asuka, it took some convincing that Hyuga was truly him, and that there was a new threat. Before a truce could be agreed upon, Deepa arrived and swiftly struck down the remaining quadruplets. Boruto was furious and attacked the man, only for his kunai to harmlessly bounce off Deepa's body. The man explained that he's able to manipulate all the carbon around him, including in his own body, to become invulnerable. Victor arrived and revealed to be allied with Deepa. Victor split up the Jonin from the Genin in the team, where Boruto and his teammates faced Deepa. Between Deepa's relentless barrage of carbon projectiles and his impervious body, the Genin were quickly overwhelmed. Boruto attempted an all-or-nothing Rasengan strike on Deepa, but the man easily endured it. As Boruto and Sarada were knocked out, Mitsuki revealed his sage transformation to save his friends and escape. With how severe Boruto and Sarada's injuries were, Mitsuki brought them to Yubina for care, who stabilized their condition. Soon after, Konohamaru and Mugino brought them back to Konohagakure for better care, also bringing Mitsuki to Orochimaru for his treatment. After successfully undergoing an operation, Boruto was left ashamed at his defeat against Deepa. Despite this, three days later, Boruto was able to pick himself back up and committed himself to growing stronger. As his goal was to evolve his Rasengan, but Konohamaru was on a mission and Naruto was too busy, Boruto turned to Kakashi for help. The retired Hokage quickly made it clear that mastering the big ball Rasengan, Boruto's goal, was impossible as he lacked enough chakra for it. Kakashi instead had him work on applying nature transformation to his Rasengan, particularly wind release. As Boruto's jutsu consistently misfired, he voiced his envy of how powerful and experienced Kakashi was at his age. Kakashi pointed out the hardships he had to endure and envied Boruto for growing up in a peaceful time with loved ones, so he wasn't alone. This inspired Boruto to use a shadow clone to apply nature transformation to the Rasengan, managing to use the wind release Rasengan, which impressed Kakashi. Despite Boruto essentially completing his new technique, Boruto concluded that the increase in power still wasn't nearly enough to handle Deepa's super dense body. Kakashi noted that with his current levels of chakra, he had reached his limit of how far he could improve the Rasengan. Boruto, however, refused to give up and continued training. Later, Boruto was approached by Shikadai, whose team had recently faced Deepa as well. As Boruto voiced his anger at Deepa, Shikadai voiced his concern that Boruto was turning Deepa into an obsession. Boruto, however, insisted that it was not about a wounded ego, but rather he saw Deepa as a wall to his growth as a ninja. After realizing that Boruto would not try hunting down Deepa, Shikadai and his teammates decided to help with the training. Shikadai decided for Boruto's training to focus his Rasengan on a single point to improve its penetrative power. As the day ended and little progress was made, Shigadai and Boruto began discussing the unique nature of Deepa's power, as it was all about the arrangement and pressure of carbon molecules. This suddenly gave Boruto inspiration. By the following day, Boruto succeeded in obliterating a massive boulder with his Rasengan. He told Kakashi about his progress. Deciding to put Boruto to the test, he arranged for Boruto to face off against Shojoji in a police facility, believing the convict would be the perfect opponent to test Boruto's progress. 
As the battle begins, Boruto's skills match Shojoji's, but his wind counters prove too powerful, even against Boruto's wind release Rasengan. Deciding he had no choice, Boruto used his new compression Rasengan. It was able to overcome Shojoji's defenses and swiftly defeated him. As Kakashi commended Boruto for coming up with the alternative plan of condensing his Rasengan rather than expanding it, Boruto collapsed as his long hours of training caught up to him. Later recovering back in the hospital, Boruto was greeted by Kakashi. He applauded Boruto's accomplishments but warned him of the dangers to his new technique. Noting that the compression Rasengan comes with great recoil that can cause great strain on his arm, it's not a technique that Boruto should use often. While accepting Kakashi's words, Boruto was still determined to refine the technique. After being dismissed from the hospital, he met with Sarada, whose own training under her parents was going well. With both of them having reached a new level, they felt it was a good time to return to the Land of Valleys to return Anato's ring to Mia. Having already gained approval to leave from his father, the two went off. Upon returning to the Land of Waves, they met Mia and gave her Anato's ring. They also learned that Victor reported to Mia that Anato was killed by enemies trying to steal their research. Realizing that Victor was using Anato for his own gain, Boruto decided to reveal the truth about Victor's goals, despite Sarada's protest. Suddenly, there was an earthquake coming from the company's main building. Boruto and Sarada decided to investigate. There, they found Konohamaru struggling to defend himself from the vicious assault of the recreated God Tree. As they helped their sensei, he explained how the God Tree was not seen since the Fourth Shinobi World War. Victor then approached, explaining that he took fragments of the dead god tree after the war ended, nurturing them with the Hashirama cell and various test subjects. He voiced his joy at how the people of Land of Valleys would be consumed by the god tree to produce chakra fruit. Victor collapsed the ground around Boruto and Sarada, sending them to the floor below. There, they were approached by Deepa. Sarada and Boruto were determined to stop him once and for all. Despite their improved skill, Deepa's carbon powers proved as infallible as ever. Boruto realized their only hope was his new compression Rasengan. Needing time to form it, he had Sarada mount a distraction, who was unable to last long enough. Suddenly, Boruto was saved by the timely arrival of the recovered Mitsuki. With Team 7 reunited, Boruto was able to land his new Rasengan. However, as it proved able to overwhelm Deepa's solid body, he activated his final defense to form a mighty armor, repelling Boruto. Boruto refused to despair and attacked again, aided by his friends who donated their chakra to him to form a super compression Rasengan, which broke through Deepa's defense and defeated him, during which Orochimaru destroyed the god tree and defeated Victor. As Mia promised to testify against the company's actions, Team 7 was proud of their victory. Back in the village, as Boruto was still nursing his injured hand, he and his friends found Denki setting up an experiment to improve radio communications. Boruto and the others decided to help him with the work. It ultimately worked, but failed to maintain stability. Denki, however, remained determined to improve the technology. Boruto joined everyone in cheering. Ao Arc in the anime, Boruto attended the memorial service of the fallen people of the 4th Shinobi World War. Later, Boruto joined his father in a sparring match at the training hall, seeing it as a chance to make up for his actions at the Chunin exams, during which all his elemental attacks were absorbed by Naruto, who goes on to defeating Boruto. Afterwards, Boruto learned that his father had his prosthetic hand modified by Katasuke to include jutsu-absorbing capacities. While Boruto was furious at this deception, viewing Naruto as a hypocrite for using such advanced tools in combat after scolding him for doing the same, Sasuke calmed Boruto down, explaining the tool itself is not a problem, but rather being over-reliant on it. As Sasuke explained more of the existence of Kara, Mitsuki asked if this group had anything to do with Boruto's mark that he gained from Momoshiki. While Boruto was furious at Mitsuki offhandedly revealing his secret, Naruto admitted that Sasuke had already told them about it, which was another reason Naruto approved the development of this type of advanced weaponry. Katasuke then arrived to retrieve his prototype, to which Naruto assigned Team Konohamaru a C-rank mission to escort the lead scientist back to the lab in Ryotan City. While Boruto stormed off in a huff, Naruto asked his Genin teammates to watch over him should anything happen with his mark. Mitsuki then talked to Boruto, convincing him to get over his anger and join the mission. Traveling by train to Ryutan City, the group encountered Ao, who lectured Boruto about scientific ninja tools, leading to him changing his views on it and respecting the man. Upon arriving at their destination, they unexpectedly encountered Sumire, and later complete the other half of their mission involving testing out scientific ninja tools. Afterwards, Boruto was greeted by Chamaru, who Boruto was happy to see again. He was surprised, however, to see the friendly dog's prosthetic leg. Akita Inuzuka explained how it was thanks to Katasuke that both Chamaru could walk again and how she found her passion for science. Amazed at how much Katasuke truly was endeared to helping Konoha and its people, Boruto decided to let go of his anger at the scientist. Boruto's team then received a call from the 7th Hokage, noting that Konohamaru and his partner Mugina went missing during a mission today and tasked them with searching for the pair. Accompanied by Katasuke, they found Konohamaru's last known location at a crash site of a blimp. 
while investigating their attack by autonomous puppets, which Katasuke subdues, giving the team the chance to destroy them all. Following Chamaru, who was trailing Konohamaru's scent, they discover the two missing Jonin in a cave. Soon after, they encounter Ao, who questions them on what they learned inside the blimp. Attempting to silence them, Ao attacked the group and stole one of Katasuke's gauntlets, which he used to absorb Boruto's Rasengan. Mugino then held Ao down long enough to collapse the cave on him and Ao to save everyone. However, Ao survived, prompting the team to retreat. Afterwards, Konohamaru insisted that they had to return the data he found in the blimp to Konoha, which Katasuke offered to act as a diversion to atone for his mistakes of leaking information. Boruto, realizing that the scientist was ashamed of his inventions, reminded Katasuke that he too hated such tools at first, but learned that all tools are either good or bad depending on how they're used. Devising a plan to defeat Ao, Team Konohamaru began their counterattack, during which Boruto fooled Ao into picking up his extreme chakra draining blade and weakening him. Breaking free of their trap, Ao attempted to absorb Boruto's oncoming Rasengan with his gauntlet, leading to Boruto using Katasuke's other gauntlet and cancelling out the effect of Ao's, giving him the opportunity to strike Ao's gauntlet and destroy it. Cornered, Ao used his mirror drones, leading to Konohamaru sacrificing himself to save Boruto from their attacks. Being barraged by their jutsu bullets, Boruto used his fear to absorb the attacks. Afterwards, he creates clones and has one of them equip his gauntlet in order to fool Ao. When the clones are all defeated, Boruto revealed himself and picked up his chakra blade to slash through Ao's artificial limbs, before defeating him with the Rasengan. After the ordeal, Boruto approached the injured Ao and gave him the same lecture Ao earlier told him. While Konohamaru congratulated his team, Boruto noticed Ao panicking, leading to him using water release to knock Boruto away. Noticing that a giant toad had crushed the area, Boruto was just standing in, he questioned why Ao had saved him while staring at his corpse. As the perpetrator introduced himself as Koji Kashin, he erects pillars around the team to restrain them with Fuinjutsu, leading to Konohamaru freeing himself from the technique and facing Koji alone. As they fight, the two use their Rasengan, prompting Boruto to comment on there being another user of the technique. After cancelling each other's Rasengan, Konohamaru is engulfed in Koji's flames, resulting in Boruto's Kama unconsciously activating, which then absorbs the Fuinjutsu and the flames. Questioning what the marking is, Boruto collapsed. After Koji becomes interested from the revelation, he retreated. Having departed the scene, Sarada assisted Boruto in walking, during which the group encountered destroyed puppets a fair distance away from the rest, followed by an unconscious boy who also had a comma. Kawaki Arc While the team examined Kawaki's body, Boruto's comma became painful. Seeing Kawaki suddenly in pain as well, Boruto wondered if they were feeling the same pain. Regaining consciousness, the team dodged Kawaki's shockwave. Refusing to provide them with information regarding the crashed blimp, Boruto showed his comma to Kawaki, leading him to believing the team were pursuers from Kara. As Boruto attempted to correct him, their conversation is interrupted by Gato, who gets in a fight with Kawaki. Boruto wanted to help, but Konohamaru insisted that this mission's newest variables made the danger level S rank, meaning they had to progress cautiously. Suddenly, Boruto's comma activated again, causing Boruto agony. At the same time, Kawaki's own comma activated, giving him newfound energy and proceeded to kill Gato. Boruto activated his own mark, using it to absorb the shockwave to protect his teammates. Seeing this convinced Kawaki more than ever that they were with Kara before he fainted. As Katasuke examined the boy, he determined that Kawaki was in fact the result of an unprecedented ninja attack, as his entire body was modified. It was decided that they bring Kawaki to Naruto. In the anime, while Konohamaru went to report to the Hokage, Sarada and her team first brought Kawaki back to the research institute to be looked after, where the strange boy was detained. Eventually, he was able to escape, prompting the institute into a state of emergency. Team 7 came to the conclusion that the boy would attempt to escape via the train and went to the nearest village. As their effort failed, they heard a disturbance and investigated. They found Kawaki attacking Sumide. The police also found the boy and engaged him, forcing him to retreat. Boruto looked after Sumire while Mitsuki and Sarada went after Kawaki. Soon after, Naruto and Sai appeared. Sumire came too and insisted not to hurt Kawaki, insisting that his actions stemmed from emotional scars due to a hard past. The Hokage took pity and passively subdued Kawaki. In Konoha, Boruto continued wondering how his mark was related to Kawaki. In the anime, during which he continued caring for Mugino's turtle. Upon seeing that it took a liking to Konohamaru, Boruto agreed to let Konohamaru adopt his late friend's pet. Later, upon returning home, he discovered Kawaki had began living at his house under Naruto's watch. Boruto noticed that Himawari's personal vase was broken and learned Kawaki was responsible, leading to him angrily confronting him. While openly indifferent to Boruto's anger, he gruffly apologized for his unintentional actions and finally introduced himself. The next day, Boruto and Kawaki began getting on each other's nerves soon coming to blows, which eventually activated their comma. 
Before the fight could escalate further, Naruto stopped them. Later, as Boruto prepared to leave for his next mission, Kawaki approached him and asked Boruto how he acquired his Kama. Unable to answer, Boruto questioned Kawaki about his, and was horrified that someone would so shamelessly sacrifice countless kids to succeed in marking just one in Kawaki. Figuring that Boruto would be a target of Kara, and also wishing to remove his own Kama, he offered to cooperate with Boruto to get rid of their marks. Speculating that once succeeded, Kara would let them be. Boruto considered it, but still wouldn't excuse him for breaking Himawari's vase, and told him to make it up for her. Later, Naruto offered to do some sparring with Boruto, which Boruto was eager to do. Kawaki insisted that Boruto try using his Kama, as understanding its power would be the first step to removing it. Knowing that Boruto still couldn't activate it at will, Kawaki activated his own so Boruto's would respond in kind. Naruto approved of his son using it and quickly showed a considerable improvement in performance. Afterwards, despite Boruto still losing, Naruto applauded his son on his recent growth, which Boruto was happy to hear. Later, Kawaki gave up trying to fix the vase, leading to Boruto yelling at him. Immediately after this, he asked Kawaki to teach him about the Kama as he wanted to master it a bit, leading to them sparring together. Afterwards, Boruto saw a vision of Momoshiki and asked Kawaki if he saw anything, which he didn't. Meanwhile, Naruto was informed by Ino that someone had infiltrated the village. Naruto told Boruto to take Himawari and run, but before it could happen, Delta arrived before them. As Delta and Naruto exchanged words, Boruto took Kawaki's fearful attitude as proof of Delta's abilities. Naruto instructed him to watch over Himawari before fighting Delta. Fearing for his father's safety, Boruto recklessly launched his vanishing Rasengan at her, who quickly absorbed the attack to re-energize herself. Going for a new tactic, Delta then launched her beam at Himawari, knowing that she would inevitably hit someone, whether it be her target or the Hokage acting as a human shield for his daughter. To everyone's surprise, however, it was Kawaki who blocked the blast at the cost of his right arm, which shocked Boruto. After Naruto defeated Delta, Kawaki began opening up more with Boruto, who introduced him to his friends. From this, Boruto and his friends began teaching him extreme shinobi picture scrolls, where Kawaki gave Boruto an extremely rare 4th Hokage card in exchange for a 7th Hokage card. Boruto and his friends also began teaching him about ninjutsu when he took an interest in it. While training with Kawaki, he quickly grasped basic concepts of chakra control. Kawaki opened up about Jigen, revealing him to be the one who modified his body and granted him his Kama and as someone they'll have to inevitably fight. Boruto stood with Kawaki, even calling him brother. Boruto later rushes back home with Mitsuki when his Kama inadvertently activated, feeling something bad happening to Kawaki. He grew even more concerned when his mark suddenly receded again. As Boruto and Mitsuki arrived, asking what happened, Kawaki explained that Jigen appeared and took Naruto. Kawaki was then suddenly subdued by Shikamaru's shadow imitation technique. Openly noting his distrust of Kawaki, Shikamaru had a team of ninja use a barrier to lock down the area while he interrogated Kawaki. While Boruto vouched for him, Kawaki did not fight Shikamaru's growing distrust. Kawaki then noticed his prosthetic arm reacting, leading him to realize Naruto was alive. Synchronizing his Kama with Boruto's, they were able to produce a rift. While Shikamaru refused to let anyone enter it, Kawaki used his Kama to escape Shikamaru's technique while he and the Genin entered the rift in Naruto's location. On the other side, they met Boro, who was guarding a pot with Naruto sealed inside. As they engaged him in battle, Boro endured Team 7 by quickly regenerating and exposed them to his Dark Cloud, which sapped away their strength. While planning to take Boruto back to Kara along with Kawaki, the combined effort of Mitsuki and Sarada gave the team an opening to retreat. After Mitsuki had Sarada analyze Boro's miss with her Sharingan, which revealed his viral nature, Sarada was picked as team leader and led their counterattack. When she was able to create an opening, Boruto and Kawaki attacked together, having recovered from the virus, destroying Boro's head and much of his upper body. After regenerating, Boruto and Mitsuki battled off Boro to help Kawaki, only for the foe to repeatedly regenerate. As Kawaki joined in the assault, weathering Boro's counter-assault against the tiring children, Sarada finally made her move. Having learned from Kawaki about Boro's limitless regeneration requiring a special core in his body, she struck with her Chidori. Successfully removing the core, Boro's body began mutating without its stabilizer. With Kawaki's help, Boruto was able to use their Kama to create a rift in the seal and free the unconscious Naruto. While the kids checked on the Hokage, Boro composed himself enough to attack, striking down Mitsuki. As the others were quickly overwhelmed by Boro's massive form, Boruto's mark evolved further, manifesting Momoshiki's will and persona while exhibiting a massive boost in power to beat Boro about. Taking complete of Boruto's body, Momoshiki obliterated Boro with a gigantic Rasengan. As the Kama deactivated, Momoshiki warned Boruto that it was not yet time for him to lose everything, leaving Boruto unconscious and falling from the sky. He was caught by Mitsuki and checked on, and upon awakening remembered nothing of Momoshiki's manifestation. After the team returned to Konoha with Naruto, they were all taken to the hospital for treatment. There, Boruto and his family were delighted to see Naruto make a full recovery. Boruto informed Kawaki of his recovery. 
When Amato was taken for questioning regarding his asylum request for Konoha, Boruto watched his interrogation. Learning more about the nature of the Otsutsuki, the Kama, and the threat it posed to him of having his being and will overwritten by Momoshikis. During the interrogation, Amato's glasses suddenly projected a battle between Koji and a weakened Jigen. Boruto watched the battle and Jigen's death, which triggered the vanishing of Kawaki's Kama, as the one in Jigen fully activated, much to Boruto's surprise. After Amato explained how this signified that Ishiki was resurrected through Jigen's body, and he was officially made a citizen of Konohagakure, the man explained that Ishiki's resurrection was unstable, and he would seek out Kawaki again to rebrand him. Boruto insisted to fight alongside his father and mentor against him, but they both refused. Before they could settle the argument, they were alerted that Ishiki had arrived in the village. Despite the threat, Boruto remained determined to help fight against Ishiki. While Naruto refused, Sasuke conceded to his request. Boruto admitted that he was less afraid of dying than hurting people should Momoshiki take control of him, but Sasuke swore as his teacher to stop Boruto by any means necessary. He then gave Boruto his precious old Ganyan forehead protector, making Boruto swear to return it in the end. On the battlefield, as Ishiki's power began overwhelming Naruto and destroying the village, Sasuke launched his sword at Ishiki. When he failed to shrink it, it was revealed to be Boruto. He activated his Kama and teleported Ishiki and himself to a separate dimension. Sasuke and Naruto soon joined to help Boruto. As the Konoha Nin faced down Ishiki, he decided the best way to get Kawaki was to present Sasuke and Naruto's corpses to the village. With blazing speed, Ishiki grabbed Boruto, impressed by how far the boy's Kama had already matured in such a short period of time noting it to be about 80% complete. Sasuke saved Boruto by swapping places and tried to strike Ishiki, only to be quickly rebuffed. As Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork managed to push Ishiki on the defense, as he began shrinking all their attacks, Ishiki demonstrated a new technique, manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. From there, Ishiki pinned down Sasuke and moved to kill him with Sasuke's own sword, only for Boruto to jump in the way, causing Ishiki to hesitate. Boruto deduced Ishiki couldn't kill him, while Ishiki tried to deny his claim, Boruto revealed what he learned about his plan from Boro during their fight, meaning that Ishiki needed Boruto alive. Boruto threatened to kill himself with a kunai if Ishiki didn't back down. Ishiki, however, quickly shrunk the kunai out of Boruto's hands and subdued him, knocking Sasuke out in the process. Ishiki explained that once Boruto was fully transformed into an Otsutsuki, he would be fed to the Ten Tails to nourish it into a god tree. Suddenly, Naruto knocked Ishiki away from his son before he released his last-ditch strategy of transforming into a new form. As Boruto was impressed by his father's new form, he struggled to keep watching, only to soon after faint from his injuries. As Ishiki was able to teleport Kawaki to a separate dimension through his chakra connection with Naruto, Boruto awoke with a Byakugan in his right eye. As Kawaki was able to outsmart Ishiki long enough to finally make the foe expire and die, Boruto suddenly assaulted Sasuke, stabbing him in his Rinnegan, now being controlled again by Momoshiki. Following a battle, Kawaki and Sasuke managed to make Boruto's personality resurface by forcing Momoshiki into absorbing more chakra. While still disoriented, Boruto stopped Momoshiki from teleporting away with Kawaki, and broke off his horn, causing his Kama to recede. As he collapsed exhausted, he apologized for the trouble to Kawaki, who apologized back. Boruto was alerted to Naruto suddenly losing consciousness. Upon checking on his father, Naruto soon awoke, revealing that usage of the Baryan mode came at the cost of Kurama dying inside of him, voiding Naruto of the Kitsune's chakra and powers. With Sasuke's Rinnegan and Kawaki's Kama gone, it was up to Boruto to use his mark to bring everyone back. Boruto struggled in fear of Momoshiki re-emerging. This prompted Kawaki to speak bluntly to Boruto, insisting that they would find a way to free Boruto from his burden, but first they must return home. Ultimately, Boruto was riled up enough by Kawaki's provocation to access a rift, letting everyone return to Konoha. Boruto proclaimed he felt empowered when alongside Kawaki, who mocked Boruto for his sappiness. Post-Kawaki Arc In following days, Boruto was taken off active duty to monitor his Kama, during which Boruto was regularly interviewed by the media about his victory over Ishiki and saving several lives from the invaders' attack on the village. While Boruto became a celebrity, he was concerned about his future. He was then met with by Kawaki, whose proper arm was restored by Amado. He noted that there may be a way to save Boruto. He tells Boruto about Code, an inner with a fanatical devotion to Ishiki and failed to become a vessel like Kawaki. Despite the failure, he obtained a white Kama and eventually became more powerful than Delta or Boro. While unsure if his mark could be transferred to Code, or even if he should, Boruto regardless resolved to continue his training, inviting Kawaki to join him. Flash forward. In the wake of Konoha's destruction, four years after the Otsutsuki attack on the village, a 16-year-old Boruto faces off against Kawaki on the remnants of the obliterated Hokage Rock. 
With Kawaki threatening to end the era of Shinobi, Boruto puts on his forehead protector and prepares to face him in battle while reminiscing about his past. Did you enjoy your video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.